Welcome to our Summer at Yule Library program and thank you for tuning in for our cooking show. My name is Mina Abdullayan, the Adult Services Coordinator of Fresno County Public Library. I'm happy to say that we are hosting Miss Michelle Falk, our Fresno food blogger, once again for our summer programs. She has created Have Fork Will Travel blog in 2018 for her love of food. She has decades of experience cooking and baking and is an accomplished competitive crafter and baker with multiple awards every year at the Big Fresno Fair. She is teaching us a couple of light summer meals for our Summer at Your Library program. As she always says in her programs, remember, life is too short for bad food. Enjoy the cooking show. Hi, I'm Michelle and I'm here from Half Fork Will Travel for the Fresno County Library Summer Sessions. Today we're going to make a few extra treats. We're going to start with zucchini fries, tempura green beans, and then we're going to go into a soy glazed chicken and then end it with desserts of grilled peaches and bananas with ice cream. So we're going to get started with the zucchini fries. Now these are baked and not fried, so that way if you're outside with the barbecue, etc., you don't need to worry about heating up hot oil. You can put these in the oven. They only take about five to seven minutes per batch, and they go really quick. So what we're going to do is what we've done is we've heated up the toaster oven, small kitchen. So we work with the toaster oven in the summertime. So toaster oven is set at 500, or if you're using convection, I would start with um, 450. And the extra airflow will help crisp them up just nicely. So we have two eggs, a half a cup of panko, and I'm using Italian uh, seasoned panko. That way we get a little bit of extra flavor in there. About a cup of Parmesan shredded. And then three small zucchini that have been uh, the ends cut off, cut in half, and then cut into sticks. So you get about six sticks per small zucchini. Salt and pepper and olive oil. It's really easy. So we're going to start with the eggs. Put those in one bowl. We're going to put the panko and cheese in the other. And we're going to do this dry to wet and then work wet to dry. So we want to make sure that the panko and the cheese are mixed together. This is going to be the coating for the zucchini. And you want it pretty well mixed up. That way you're not getting a clump of cheese or just a clump of the breadcrumbs. Okay, now we're going to whip the eggs real quick. And you want it pretty well mixed up. You don't want bits of yolk hanging out. About like that. Okay. All right, so again, wet to dry. You don't want to wind up with a sticky finger by the time you get to the end of it. So I'm going to take a couple of these and put them in. If you have a little ice tong like this, it works really well. And you want to make sure that the zucchini are coated. You can use your fingers if you want. I just don't feel like getting super messy. And we're going to move a tray with a rack. And I have it, the rack on here so that way the airflow will get around the zucchini and crisp them up so you don't have soggy on one side. You want to make sure that the extra drains off. Again, you don't want clumps of things. And we're going to do two at a time because they're small. And I use a spoon because, again, I don't feel like the need to have clumpy things all over my hands. But you want to make sure that the zucchini is coated and press it on whenever you can. All right, so first two are done. Shake off the excess, put them on the sheet. And then go on to the next couple. 
and you might get a little bit of the breadcrumbs and cheese into the egg that'll be okay you don't want the opposite egg put into the zucchini the egg helps the panko stick and the cheese stick and that's what you want so that way when we put them in the oven they get nice and crisp And if it doesn't stick very well on the back side, when you put it in, just press it on, shake off the excess, put it on the sheet. Let me get the rest of this tray done. We'll put it in the oven. Okay, so that just took a few minutes, and we have a nice little tray of zucchini. Again, you could put all of them on. Um, I'm doing them in batches because it is a toaster oven. I don't want to crowd everything, and I do like the idea of an airflow around the base of them. So we have the toaster oven that is set at 450 on convection or 500 if you're using a regular oven. And you just put them in, let them go for about five to seven minutes till they're nice and golden brown. Pull them out and they'll be ready to eat. So give me just a few minutes while these bake and we will see what we have. So they've cooked for about seven minutes. If you're using a toaster oven, it's going to take probably closer to 10 minutes, 12 minutes total. The toaster oven does not get as hot as a regular oven but they still are going very quickly and they're baked. So I've pulled them out and as you can see they're a little um, not as covered with the crumb mixture on the back so I flipped them over. We have some extra of the panko and cheese so I'm just going to sprinkle this on the back just a little bit and some of it will stick. You can always push them together a little bit. They're very hot so be careful. The main thing right now is we want to make sure that the backs get crispy too. So just coating these a little bit and if it falls through it's okay it's you're just going to clean it off the uh, when you do dishes so a little bit extra cheese and crumbs will not hurt anybody at this point all right so I'm going to put these in the oven for about another seven minutes we'll, they'll be all set to eat so give me just a moment so it's been about 12 minutes. The, again, you'll know your oven if it's going to run a little bit hotter or take a little bit longer. The main thing is to keep checking it after about the 7 to 10 minute mark to make sure that they're not overcooking. So let's go ahead and pull these out and see how they look. And they are delicious and golden brown. So be very careful. These are very hot. And I'm not going to try one because they are just out of the oven, so they're going to be uh, just a little super hot. Yeah, it was like lava, just about. So what you want to do once you take them off the heat is hit them with a little bit of salt. And you could do this with the salt before you go put them in the oven. It's up to you. I like salting afterwards. And just a slight dash of pepper. Just enough to kick it up a notch. And there you have it. Zucchini fries. So let me get reset for the next dish and we'll get started. So now we'll get started on the tempura green beans. Just a few ingredients. Uh, make sure that you have your oil, about three cups, heated up to 350, 375. This little Cuisinart one runs a little on the lower side, so it's at 375. We have three quarter cups of rice flour, one quarter cup of cornstarch, one quarter teaspoon of baking soda, one egg yolk that's been beaten well with just about a teaspoon of water, one cup of seltzer water and about a pound of green beans and then salt of course because you need a little bit of salt to amp up the flavor so we're going to put all this in the bowl and if you watched any of my other videos you know that I have a tendency to use too small of a bowl for what I'm working on uh, today I made sure to get a big enough bowl because we're going to be dipping green beans and I don't want to run out of room in goes the baking soda we're going to put the egg right in the middle. Move these out of the way. Alright, I'm going to put 
three good sized pinches in. We don't want too much because of the baking soda. And we'll just get that a little stir, get the eggs start incorporated while we add in the seltzer water. And make sure that the seltzer water is chilled. You want a nice light batter. You're, if it's room temperature, you're not going to get as crispy a coating on the outside of the green beans. All right, let's mix this up real quick. You want to make sure that all of the flour is incorporated. And the reason to use rice flour is it'll give it a nice crispy texture along with the cornstarch. So we have just a nice light batter. And you can do this ahead of time. Uh, I wouldn't say too far ahead of time, but like earlier in the day or overnight if you think you're going to be doing it first thing in the morning. Make sure we get that all incorporated. Nice light batter. About like that. Okay. Alright, let me move this out of the way. And we have our pounded green beans. You don't want to crowd the pan. That out of the way. Putting in a few at a time. You want to make sure they're covered, but not too much so. All right. And if you have two spiders, this is where this will come in handy because you're going to have one wet. You don't want to use the same one when you're pulling everything out. Make sure they're drained well. You just want a really light coating on there. And they should cook really quickly with just a very light coating. While those are going, I'll dump a few more in. And they're bubbling merrily away. And they shouldn't take long, only about maybe a couple minutes at best. I would say 45 seconds to a minute. So the first batch is about done. They're nicely coated, light, crispy, and a little bit golden brown. We're going to put them on some paper towels on a plate or tray. We want them to drain. Let me get the next batch going, then we'll season these real quick. You always want to salt your vegetables or anything you fry as soon as you pull them out, otherwise the seasoning won't stick. All right, so get this batch going. And again, you want to get off as much as you can. You want the green beans to shine, not have a bunch of, uh, a blot of dough, basically. All right, and you don't want to crowd it. I'm going to put just a couple more in. All right. So those are going. Make sure you stir them gently. Once they sit in the oil for a second, you, that way they don't stick together. And you just let them cook. Alright, so for this batch, we're going to season them with just a little bit of salt. They're going to be very hot, so please be careful if you're going to plate right away. We have these cute little dishes. And we're just going to fill the cup. If you have any of the yogurt sauce left over from the other episode, you can serve them with that. Or a little bit of ranch dressing, or even just a squeeze of lemon. And there you go, tempura green beans. Now we're going to start the soy glazed chicken with honeydew relish. So just a few things to get ready ahead of time. We have four chicken thighs. You can also use chicken breasts that have been skinned and deboned. So for the chicken marinade, we have two teaspoons of soy sauce, two teaspoons of mustard. This is a little bit more than two teaspoons. We're not going to use all of it. And then for the honeydew relish, we have three teaspoons of chopped mint, about a quarter cup of diced red onion, two tablespoons of lime juice, and then salt and pepper, and then about half of a honeydew melon that's been diced small. This is a relish, this is not a salad. 
All right, so we're going to get the chicken started first so that way it can marinate while we prepare the honeydew uh, relish. So into the bowl, it's real simple. We are going to put the soy sauce. And we'll just put all the mustard because I like mustard on chicken. Mustard is really good on pork as well. And again, this marinade can do for pork as well as chicken. So you just want to make sure it's stirred up well. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a marinade. It's not a vinaigrette. But you do want it mixed up as much as possible. So we have it pretty well mixed up. All right, so I'm going to put in the chicken. And again, these are thighs that have been deboned and skinned. You want to take the bone out so that they'll cook quickly and make sure that all of the chicken is coated. And you can wear gloves if you want. You can use tongs. I'll be washing my hands before I put them on the grill and before I get started on the honeydew, but I want to make sure that they're completely coated with the marinade. And this will go really quickly. You want to refrigerate them in the marinade for about half an hour to an hour once they're completely coated. And then they'll cook probably, oh, five to seven minutes on the grill. They're very thin. And if you're using chicken breast, make sure you, that you cut it in half. You want it about quarter to half inch, about half inch thick at best, again, so that it cooks quickly. All right, so it's messy, but it's fun. We have the chicken soaking. Let me wash my hands. We'll get started on the honeydew. The honeydew goes just as quickly. Again, we have the half of a small diced honeydew. We'll dump in the mint, the onions, whoop, lime juice, and we're going to do probably about half a teaspoon of salt. And pepper is optional, but I think it balances out the sweetness a little bit and you're just going to stir it up and that's all there is to the relish. You can also add probably a little bit of cumin or a little bit more mint. Basil would work well in this too, but that's all it is. We're just going to let it sit. The salt is going to work its magic on the honeydew. Give it a nice sweet salty taste. The mint is going to bring a little bit of freshness and the onion will be a little bit of acidity and brightness to it. So give me just a minute to get the chicken ready. It should be about done by now. It's been a little bit and we'll get started on that. So the chicken's been in the refrigerator marinating for about 40 minutes and we're ready to cook it. So the grill is heated up. It's nice and hot. Just put a little bit of olive oil. You don't want it to stick. And once I put these on I will get a different, I'll wash the tongs off so that way we can use them. You don't want to cross contaminate with raw chicken and cooked chicken. All right, so you want to try and lay them so that way it's going to be evenly spaced on the grill and that it's about the same thickness. And if you don't have enough room on the grill to do them all at one time, do them in batches. That's fine. And I had the grill almost to the highest level, it's about medium hot. But as soon as these are, they should cook fairly quickly. And it smells wonderful. All right, I have a little tiny piece of chicken. That will be the taste tester. And it's not as hard to debone chicken as you might think. I would recommend getting a pair of good kitchen shears. Everybody should have anyways. All right, so we'll turn it up just a little bit. We want them to cook. Give me just a moment to wash the tongs off. We'll be right back. It's been about five minutes on the first side. We have this little tiny taster piece that I'm checking. It's not quite done yet. It will be eaten as soon as it's done. So we're going to turn the chicken over. As you can see, it's cooking nicely. I back the heat down just a little bit because there is some sugar in the uh, soy sauce, natural sugars in the soy sauce and the mustard, and I don't want them scorching, but I do want the chicken to cook. 
So we're going to give it just another few minutes. I promise I will save this until we're back on camera ready to try it. But give me another five minutes and we'll be ready to plate. So the chicken's been cooking around, say, about 10 minutes. Uh, flipped once after about seven and then it's been going for another 10. We want to make sure it's heated all, or cooked all the way through. So I have an instant read thermometer. We're going to check the chicken and it should be at least 165. You don't want it to go too far over that because it could dry out, but we're looking at 170, 165. This is a little bit thicker piece right here. All right, so the chicken's ready. Turn this off. Now we have this little teeny tiny piece. Gets its own special place. Right there. The little teeny tiny chicken. All right, so let's pull these off. Pull one of these off and let it sit for a moment and then we'll cut it open. And it doesn't take any time at all. Really nice marinade on that. Super tender, cooked all the way through. You can either slice it thin, serve it as a whole piece. Choice is up to you. I'm going to slice this thin and then we'll plate it with the honeydew relish, which will just take a moment. Alright, see how pretty that looks? Alright, let me get the honeydew relish, grab a plate, and we'll go from there. Alright, so we have our chicken. We're just going to arrange it on the plate. And you don't have to be fussy, you can do this on whatever you have. Again, you could serve it whole, it would be really good over rice or noodles. Or even um, cooked cabbage would be good. All right, so we have that. Make sure you wash your board with soap and water when you're done. Let me get a spoon. Put a little bit of the lovely honeydew relish on there. And you have the sweet and the salty combined. And just to give it a bite here. We have our teeny tiny little one. Whoop. As I make a mess. Mm. So the saltiness of the soy bounces out the sweet from the honeydew and the mint gives a little bit of a kick. The lemon juice is a really good addition to that. But you have a really simple plate that just takes about 15 minutes to make it's a really easy side dish or a main dish as well. So let me get reset and we'll go on to dessert. We're going to get started on dessert of grilled peaches and bananas. I've put a little bit of butter on the grill. That way it can start heating up and getting all bubbly. So when we put the peaches on, it can start caramelizing them. We're going to do the peaches first and the bananas afterwards. Once the peaches cook a little bit, they are thicker, so they're going to take longer. For the bananas, you want them to be a little bit underripe, or you can even use plantains because we're going to be adding brown sugar. You don't want it to be too sweet, and if the bananas are on the riper side, they're going to get very mushy instead of being able to hold their shape when we put them on the grill. Oh. All right, so you can smell the butter starting to cook the peaches. And this will go pretty quickly. I have the grill on high. Again, you know your grill, whatever works best for you. You can also do this in a pan. Because of the sugars in the peaches, this is not something you can start and walk away. So we're going to, when we flip the peaches, we'll put the bananas on. Once the bananas are cooked halfway through, then we'll add the brown sugar. 
All right, so we're going to just let them sit for a minute and cook, get some grill marks. And for the peaches, you actually want them to be ripe. It'll be easier to get the pits out and they'll be sweeter. If you use an underripe peach, you can use plums as well. It's going to be hard to get the pit out without cutting into the flesh and they won't cook as nicely as if they're a little bit ripe. All right, so we'll just wait for a moment. Yeah, see they're starting to get marks a little bit, so we'll just let them sit. And it smells like peach pie in the house. I'm pushing them down to make sure that they get contact with the grill so that we can get a little bit of grill marks. And when you're cutting peaches or any stone fruit, there's a chance that it's not going to be even just because the fruit has a mind of its own. You can smell the sugar starting to caramelize. Again, this is going to go quick. And this is the fun part is to be patient while it cooks. All right, so it's been a few minutes. Let's turn these over. They're starting to get caramelized. All right, so we're going to turn them back over in a minute. We're going to put the brown sugar down, but we want them to just continue cooking. All right, so we'll put the bananas on. I'm actually going to do the rounded side down. So I will flip them over with the brown sugar and butter in a moment. They will get nice little marks on them and get just as pretty as the peaches. And there's a little bit of butter on and olive oil on the grill right now, so we don't need to add anything else. Turning the temperature back up. And again, this these cook really quickly, so don't put them on and walk away. There's high sugar content in both of the fruit, and sugar can turn to dangerously hot really quickly. I'm just turning them a little bit at a time so that way the different sides cook. Make sure they cook all the way through. You can do this in an oven as well. Put it on 350. I would put the peaches cut side down for about 15 minutes or so, flip them over, and go for probably about another 10 minutes. Again, you know your oven. You want them to be brown, and you can finish them off in the pan. The idea is we're cooking them, and then we're going to glaze them. See the bananas are starting to caramelize a little bit. And bananas are really super simple, so I'm going to move them out of the way. Add in the rest of the butter. And this is unsalted butter, though if you can use salted, you just need to be aware that it's going to change the flavor just a little bit. All right, so that's on. I'm going to turn the temperature down. Sprinkle these with just a little bit of brown sugar. It doesn't take much. The, the fruit has natural sweetness already. And this is definitely a part that you do not walk away on because brown sugar will melt. And we're going to be caramelizing them with the brown sugar and the butter. All right, now for the peaches. And this will form kind of a sauce to coat the fruit. Super simple, super quick. You could do this on a barbecue, just use a, a grill pan or a heavy duty like a cast iron skillet. See, doesn't that look delicious? 
it smells like peach pie with brown sugar really good and then to top it we have some whipped cream and toasted almonds and a drizzle of honey okay the bananas are cooking really well I'm going to move the peach, this one here, move the bananas up just a little bit. You have to watch this at this point because the sugars could burn and you don't want burnt sugar. You'd have to start over. So the peaches are done. We're going to turn everything off. See how lovely and caramelized they are? And if you want, you can make sure they get a little bit of extra brown sugar goodness on there. I put two per bowl. And the bananas, again, because they are slightly underripe when you start, they're not going to fall apart. Plantains will work really well for this. And get a little bit of extra brown sugar. All right, and then to top them off, we're going to do just a little bit of whipped cream. You could use ice cream also. Okay, a little bit of toasted almonds. And just a little drizzle of honey. just for a little extra sweetness. If you wanted to, you could add some fresh mint or even tarragon, which would be a nice flavor contrast with the fruit. There you go. Okay, let's get set up and you can see the whole meal. We're at the end of the cooking session and all that's left to do is taste everything. So we're gonna start off with the tempura green beans. They're nice, light, crunchy. Cooked in the center. Just a little teeny tiny bit. Crunchy, you don't want to overcook them. You want to have a little bit of bite left. We have our oven baked zucchini fries. Mm. The Parmesan in the coating adds quite a bit to it. Don't skimp on the Parmesan. It's better to have a little bit too much than not enough. So the, now we're going to go on to the main course. The soy glazed chicken with the honeydew relish. And this is one of those dishes that you can crisp up a little bit more if you choose. Because there are, is no skin on it, you can fudge a little bit more on the time if you want it crispy. I didn't want this crispy. So this honeydew relish, you might want to make a day ahead and then drain it really well to get all the extra moisture off before plating. The mint gives it a nice spring flavor. It's a little sweet, a little spicy, a little salty, and it works really well with the chicken. Okay, we have our glazed peaches, and they're topped with just a little bit of whipped cream. You can also use ice cream. And as you can see, they've picked up a really beautiful caramelized texture from the grill and a little bit extra sweetness from the brown sugar and butter. A little bit of whipped cream. Mm. It tastes just like a peach pie with whipped cream on top. Okay, now we're going to try the bananas. As you can see, they're nice and golden brown. The caramel has set a little bit on there, which is just what you want. Okay, take a little bit of whipped cream. And again, see how beautifully golden that is? Mm. So the thing about when you are using brown sugar or any sugar with a fruit is you have to be very careful. It will get extremely hot extremely fast and you don't want to get that on your skin so that way you don't have a burn. Let it cool off just a little bit before tasting it. Um, your mouth will thank you later. I hope you enjoyed the recipes today and as you can see we have some pretty tasty food. Remember 
Life is too short for bad food.